imagine very close, it'd just be a matter of inches. It's the leader when he is leading. You know, it's always interesting when I talk to you climbers, you make it sound so easy, but sometimes you, when we're having dinner and stuff, you have all kinds of horror stories What's to that? tell. Unless <laughs> well, I move out of my way. It's, it's simply because the, uh, the equipment doesn't always, always work in accordance to how it says it's, or how we assume it'll work. Hi. Hi. That's some view there. With protection and such. This is being used here in 1960. What is happening? Irving Smith, a 17-year-old from Fresno, yeah. fell from the arrow notch 500 feet into Arrow Chimney, and this rock was closed for a year out of respect for him. There's so much uh, yeah. Yeah, care that goes into climbing. These climbers are so careful with the selection of equipment these days. It's just amazing. Give me some free beaners, would you? Bob it. In addition to that, Bob, the evolution of equipment has played no small part in the advancement of technique. Yeah, I was going to say, back in 1947, when this was climbed, it took uh, four men five days. Uh, but they didn't have anywhere near the equipment that, that uh, these fellows have, right? Right, it's just the sophistication on all levels. The equipment, the boots, the ropes, everything, the technique. Okay, now we see Ron Cock coming up, joining Jerry Moffat. Oh, now you can do it. Okay. And then it'll be one... Short pitch to the top, to and that is one exposed location right there. No. Getting their equipment. You don't want to hold that, and I can hold it up. Do you want me? Uh, I'll hold it. There's a shot of the World Trade Center. I'll give you an idea of exactly how high this climb has been, 1,400 feet, that these two climbers have climbed in the last two days. Can you scab any beaners? Yeah. Whatever. They can be on friends, doesn't matter. The reference uh, to beaners that Jerry or Ron is asking Bob is in reference to the snap links or carabiners to which the rope is clipped through. You can see some beaners or carabiners uh, leading from the rope from Jerry's harness at least directly to the anchor point right in front of his head. Look at all those people over there, man. Okay, that's good, thank you. Yesterday, when the two climbers oh, were climbing, Ron funny. seemed that's a little funny. bit exasperated yeah, that perhaps uh, that. Jerry might you know, be just a little bit loose in his climbing. Uh, I'm sure that uh, they're being a lot more careful today. Yeah, certainly. You gotta remember that, that for the most part, Jerry has, has made a reputation as a world class and world leader, but, uh, the father, the climbs that he has done here, the two have, for the most part, been very okay. short, yeah. two, three, maybe, maybe four hundred footers of extreme physical and technical ability. Are you saying that, he, are you saying that he's gained a little respect for this rock? I'm sure he has. Okay, while well, we have a little break right here, let's go down for some comments from my colleague Jack Whitaker and George Willing. Thank you, Bob. As you said, George, this is the. Uh, what did you call this? The exposed belay? Uh, yeah, this is what is called a hanging belay. Uh, there are no ledges to stand on to speak of, and uh, most of the weight is harness hanging from your anchor points. That's what it looks like to run. You about ready? Yeah, Could you give me a... So, we're ready now for the last pitch. Try the last to... dance. The last rope length. The hardest of them all, actually. such nerves steel I'm, I'm like Bob yeah, Daddy you people fine. make it sound like it's Thank an everyday fine. occurrence <laughs> I wouldn't like to be hanging out to where they're hanging now that's putting a lot of trust no I got tons now I'm ready and that's got me on that beaner right I think, uh, <laughs> well wherever possible you double up Why? all your snap links all your beaners and everything yeah. you try not I to trust only one line, piece but... of protection especially on a belay now at this point I would think that what fatigue there is is uh, the adrenaline is fighting that now because they see the end in sight. Well, don't that's true. That's absolutely right. Um, it's 
As much adrenaline as you may have, you can still get tired, though. You got that whole line? Is it, can I, I'll take it, yeah. but I need you to unweight it. So Ron is going to take this pitch. <laughs> right. Jerry led the last one, and he took uh, what is called a rack of equipment, yeah. basically a selection of gear mm -hmm. to use for protection. Mm -hmm. uh, Why don't you do me a favor and unweight this, huh? And Ron the takes it the... to lead the next pitch, it so is? he can use them. Exactly. Here, right here. I don't know. Like I say, it's really good to run it through a beaner. Yeah. Run it through a carabiner. He refused to do it. All right, there they are. And there's where they're going. You see the cameraman just oh. below the summit. Waiting for them. Ron has just like one or two difficult moves, and then it eases up a little okay. bit to moderate difficulty. What you do is you got to flip it off, right? Then it gets very difficult again. All of it? For another 20 hours here? What can you say that this is as difficult a stretch as there is in the world? That's very that hard to say. Yeah, it's it's yeah, somewhat oh, subjective. Ah. Uh, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, why are you doing that? I'll just. Ron take and Jerry are up to right? the, the most <laughs> difficult climbing there is. Oh, sure is nice but this is right up day. there, with them. Now the classic thing is to have that's probably the whole pitch right there. But, and if I if it goes any further, okay. got me, chap. Yep. Unbelievable. There he goes. And as Ron starts this last pitch, let's go back to Bob Yaddy sure and John Long. Pull me off. Okay, Jack, here we have. It's been a long two days for these climbers. Ron Cock now, ready to make the final, final pitch to the top. Tell us a little bit about the uh, pitch, too, John. Uh, this first pitch, or this last pitch, rather, was uh, first done by John Salothe by the method of drilling holes into the rock and pounding bolts, expansion anchors, which are good to a strength enough to, uh, to hold a Volkswagen off the ground. That's what Ron is now clipping his carabiner into and the rope and turn through the carabiner. Goes up on moderately uh, hard ground up until the V slot, or looks like a bit of an open That's what we're above looking at right up above us, right? right? And that represents the the most difficult stretch of this whole climb and, and is probably on par with any rock climb in the United States. Why don't you describe difficult. for us just a second the technique that he's using as he leans back from the rock. We really haven't had a chance to get into that much here. <laughs> that technique is afforded to only people with strength commensurate to Ron Calx. Anybody else would be hugging the rock for their life. Ron has, of course, fingers like steel so he can he can grab a hold of something yeah, and I lean back I think it's pretty and, amazing and when you think that you're sitting all the way up here, uh, right. 1,400 feet above the... Uh, <laughs> from the start of the climb, leaning back. That's a necessary move to be able to see where he's going because he knows shortly above him is a piece of piece of climbing uh, that has really one nasty thing. Now he's trying to select his route. What makes it so nasty is, is that the rock actually bulges, becomes overhanging, that is more more than 90 degrees or steeper than your garage door. And there really are no cracks up here, are there? And there's a, there's a wee crack in the recess of that little slot above them. What it'll eventually do is get a hold of, hold of a down, down sloping flake, then it'll lean back and take a look, and then Hi. make an all out effort for going for it. The wind seems to have picked up quite a bit right now. What's the effect of, that the wind yeah. would have on him? The, the effect is great. Oh, Even the slightest effect, you can see this, the, the tail of his, of his harness blowing in the breeze. It, 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 it affects his balance, which is tenuous at best in perfect conditions. Slack, Jack. Looks like his shoes have come untied. He's on a good shelf now. What he's going to lace them up to a point where the grommets bend because he's going to need every bit of adhesion and friction qualities that the boot affords. And we might say that these boots have been specially made for them. They are skin tight. They are very flexible, I get my and shoes the tight there, rubber on the soles is of a special variety that is very, very adhesive to the rock. I should add, Bob, that 
that the rubber technology over the years has increased, has been improved many, many fold. Good thing I'm, it's only 512 or I might be a little nervous. Probably up to this good point. Good thing it's only 512 or I might be a little nervous. Talking about the uh, degree of difficulty right now. Hey, just keep an eye on me, huh? Yeah, I'm watching you. Okay, right now he's entering, entering into the top grade of world rock climbing. What is the feeling now when you've been climbing for two days, you're doing something that <laughs> probably very few people in the world can even do, and uh, free climbing up a rock like this? Well, after two days, probably the only thought on his mind is to get to the top, but he's got to do it free, which is to qualify his ascent by climbing just with hands and feet, and he is looking at one, one exceptionally difficult piece of climbing right above him here. Okay, what are the problems here? The problems are virtually nothing in the way of hand and footholds. Okay. Bulging rock, slick. He's tired, very steep. He's under the gun. It's about any problem you can think of he's facing right now. Okay, he just has a few more feet to go to get right to the sun, right to the top of this rock. Lost Arrow Spire. Beautiful Yosemite Park. Ron seems to be uh, very quick once he makes up his mind where he's going to go. He there doesn't is. seem to uh, take any time. He's moving right over it. Boy, he's really flying up there now. Jerry Moffat belaying him from above, below. What is that blowing around up there? That's chalk. And he's looking at a very difficult mantle here. Looks like there's almost no hold at all. No, he's got to he's got to use the friction of his hands. And just just muscle straight over. Let's snap in some protection. They'll droop a wire over a stud because there's no hanger. It's a little wire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's one more move. The stud got there by by a previous ascent, the stud bob that's that he has just clipped the wire from has been drilled by a previous ascent. That yeah, was probably a welcome addition right now. To it this certainly line. is. He's Do it. Yeah, I got it. It's a done thing. He's got it. Yeah, good job. Oh man. Oh, well done, Ron. Ow. Successful Ron Kalk. Right, well After two days of climbing. Mm. <laughs> He's pretty happy about it. Ron Kalk, 27 year old. Let's you off. Horrendous. Yes. Oh, man. Let me out of here. Ron will now belay for Jerry Moffat, who will 
probably come up there rather quickly. Pressure is always on the first climber. It certainly is. He's looking at no at no potential of a fall, Bob. So it's now that is one spectacular view. Being uh, easily belayed now with lots of protection from the top. Jerry Moffat will join Ron Cock here at the top of Lost Arrow Spire. I'm horrendously pumped. What a beautiful sight that is, too. Moffat, he's still down there? Here we go through our hour-long ceremony of uh, switching ropes. And look at all the people who have come up here on the rim to watch these climbers today. This is really the mecca for rock climbing. Oh man, this is Not only in the United States, but probably in the world. I barely made that. Well, he saved the toughest for last, but he That's seemed to make it right over there. Not many climbers in the world could do that, either. That's hard it's to say. It's pretty amazing Ron. when you're sitting here watching it. Okay, Ron! Now Jerry Moffat's turn. And while... Jerry Moffat is getting ready to make his final ascent here in beautiful Yosemite Park. Lost Arrow Spire. Now back to Jim Lampley in New York. ABC's Wide World of Sports is being brought to you by Michelob Light. Super premium taste and a less filling beer. Who says you can't have it all? By Honda Power Equipment. Lawn mowers, lawn tractors, and portable generators made easy and made to last. By Armor All. It's science, but it works like magic. And by Skull Bandits, an individual portion of tobacco in a neat pre-moistened pouch. For tobacco pleasure without lighting up, it's the little pouch of tobacco pleasure. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. Flying is United's job, and United is now serving 50 top cities in the United States. We remind you, ABC's Wide World of Sports will remain with this live climb of Lost Arrow Spire and Yosemite National Park until the second climber, Jerry Moffat, has reached the summit. Be sure to stay with these ABC stations. News will be following immediately. We're back live at Yosemite National Park in California oh, on top of the Lost Arrow Spire. It me, Conquering Jack. it, Ron Kalk with a free climb and Wasted. bringing up now his partner, Jerry Moffat. What a thrilling last pitch that was. Oh, oh it certainly was. Definitely what they call the crux of the climb. Okay, take it! There's Ron at the top. Only a few, but the most experienced climbing, and accomplished climbers oh. could do this. Okay. Free. Climb away. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one spot there where the bulges, where there was no crack, <laughs> that he had to just do it on sheer Hurry strength. Up. That's it. That was a mantle move. Okay, let's watch Jerry. You have just seen the first free climb from the base to the top in one push ever done on the Lost Arrow Spire. Here will be the second man to do it, Jerry Moffat. Five minutes. When, when he's here, five minutes. Two minutes. I guess that's uh, Ron speaking to Mike Hoover, one of the cameramen. Asking how long it would take to set up for the Tyrolean trance? I guess, I don't know. A traverse, yeah, possibly. Again, right here, this is difficult, It's, but it's moderately Great difficult. Places. No way. <laughs> Jerry Moffat, our cameraman, and up top, Ron Kalk. This has been a full on epic, man, I tell you. Hello, Mom. It's a top of the world. <laughs> what a tremendous feeling of accomplishment it must be. Oh, there's, there's nothing like it. For a climber, anyway. <laughs> uh, Jerry Moffat. I'm sure Ron is feeling very happy with himself. Oh, 
Okay. How hard is it? I thought it was real hard. It's tricky. Did you see how I did those moves up the corner there? Okay, good luck. Very tricky. It's hard to give a number rating when you're doing it. As John said, though, it's it's among the climbs. Looks like Jerry's tightening up his feet, his shoes too. To get himself a more intimate uh, feel for the rockets beneath him. You want to minimize the amount of slipping and slopping that happens with your feet sliding around inside your shoes down to zero. All the same to me, there seems to be a certain uh whimsy to uh, pausing there to tie your shoelace. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got a loose end down there, right? It's somewhat of a ledge, yeah, no you problem. might call it. It's a little bit of a sloping ledge. Yeah. but Yeah, I bet. When Ron did it, he seemed so... Casual, you might casual, say? Casual, yeah. So well, compared, to the, to, compared to the <laughs> steepness they've been encountering, this is a, this is a ledge. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> but as you can see, it's not much of one. <laughs> All right, to the top for Jerry Moffitt. As the spectators on the rim are watching this final moments of this rather historic ascent. Here's Jerry reaching for uh, a little crack there. He's got what you might call an underclank. You're sticking your fingers up into the crack. You can pull back on it somewhat while you're pushing your feet against the rock. It's a good illustration right there of just what I'm talking about. And the difficulties ensue. Check out that hold on the left of your foot. What? <laughs> that last little finger pocket. You want to stem out to the left with your left foot. You can palm it first, then stand up on it. Ron, being, uh, having successfully done it, knows what he's talking yeah. about. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, coming up to that strength part. Hmm? Well, this, this is no piece of cake right here. There's a little edge in the crack, too. Right beneath that top finger pocket. What? Right beneath the top finger pocket, there's an edge you can use. The holes there are minuscule. Hmm? Uh, Watch it. A little slip. Go ahead. You can see when, uh, when the second climber doesn't encounter much of a way. fall when he slips. Ah, God damn. Heavy. So he'll you go down. Go for it there. Now he's coming back down to get regrouped. Well, he's coming back down to... Oh, uh, kinky, man. I thought I was through with this. That small ledge. Pin's so. going. Right. Then the second one with your left. And then your right hand right underneath your left. You get your right hand in there first. Yeah, right hand in the first finger pocket. Just below. Well, come up so I can hear you. I could write it down, but I don't have any paper. <laughs> Ron is loose. Of course, he's on the top. <laughs> Jerry still has to negotiate this rather treacherous last piece. It's generally... Uh done by the top climbers that you know, if they what did you go, you go you go right left and then what then there's a little seam in the crack for your fingertips beneath your left hand huh. and then as you step up on that get your left foot around the corner
Put your lappets on a smear around the corner. Ah. A smear. If you can imagine what a smear is. Mm. Mm. An undefined hold. Something you just sort of push your foot against. You stem it. Yeah, go for it. See, there's a lingo describing all you the moves. He got it, but he seems to be sideways, doesn't he? Well, he's he's doing it differently. Yeah. Uh, or he got himself into a tight spot, which ended up being quite different from what Ron, Ron did. Okay. Yeah, okay. He's, he's in the same position Ron was yeah. in. Yeah. It seems it's to work well. little edges for your feet. So now comes the strength part here, huh? Yeah, he can stand there, I guess, and unclip. Wait, wait, let's put it. Oh, okay. Are you still into that last bolt? Mm. <laughs> steep enough for you? <laughs> Plenty steep for me. I just can't believe it because they, where they get their strength. It's training and experience. If you could imagine some of these holes are hey, about as... Your left foot feels pretty good there, doesn't it? Does your left foot feel all right on that bit of an edge there? Kind of. Okay, then you see that those edges for your right foot? There's a, a lower one and a higher one. Get them right and higher. Yeah. And then reach up around the corner on the right, your right of that bolt. Okay, so there's that, that one I clipped into. Okay, up around the... Ah, shit. Whoa. Ugh. Well, it didn't feel as good as he thought. Uh. <laughs> Those edges are about okay. as thick or thin as a coin glued to the rock, if you can imagine. Try one more time. Okay, we're, we, we kind of want to do this uh, trialian today. <laughs> That's the way they get off. <laughs> See, Jerry wants to climb down so he can climb it free, which means without having fall, fallen and using the rope at all. Under his own power all the way. <laughs> what did he say? Did he stand up wrong? What? You stem your feet up! Right. You were there. If you could have reached over the top to the right of that bolt, there's a little dish for your fingertips. Okay. Oh, Jerry tries again. From Glacier Point across the valley. Second, then. Oh, all glasses trained. Good. This testy moment. He's uh, probably getting pumped up and tired. Hurry, right I now. can't hold you. <laughs> uh. It's really not much to add to this. It really speaks for itself, yes. doesn't it, Jack? Mm -hmm. Get your feet stemmed. Now well, he's there to where he was before. A little different position. Yes. Hopefully in a, a little better. Feeling a little more positive on the rock there. Shoot, look at this. Yes. Look at that slopey thing his, his foot is on. Yep. Okay. Wow. Now get your feet stabilized. You should be able to stand there pretty well. Okay, now around there, see that chalk mark to, the, to your right? Get your feet on good. Yeah, that there. I'm saying I'm going to pull off. <laughs> My feet are totally bleeding. I think. Yeah, keep chalking it up. Oh, okay. skin's moving. Okay, now you'll see there's a, uh, 
hold there on the right, your right, the chalk left. mark. And then there's another tiny little fingertip edge for your left. And just high step. Pulling that last piece of protection off that Ron had used, that wire over the stud. One more move and it's over. Yeah, but what a move. Well, almost. <laughs> Okay, right in there. That's the dish. Okay, now there's a little... Reach around and look where you're going. There's a better hold for your left hand as you step up. Hmm. Yeah. And then walk... Uh, it's, it's all right. You can get your fingernails on it. Yeah. But see that higher foothold for your... Uh, yeah, there, and as you pull up, now reach up with your left, and, and you'll go for those fingertip edges that I chalked there. Yeah. This is really the crux move. That's it. Okay, now get your feet up. Get okay, those fingers. That's it, yeah, go he's on. He's got an edge with his left hand. Get your hand. foot up. Come on, Jerry. Oh, wow. There we go. Come on, Jerry. Okay, you got it. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right, Jerry Moffat. Whoa. Excellent. <laughs> Victory! You're off. Hey, those Jumars are in that bag, aren't you? What you see? There you go. The first ever to free climb Lost Arrow Spire from base to tippy in one push. Yeah. It has been quite a day. They'll get down off the mountain by a traverse, but it has been an historic moment in free climbing, an historic moment here in Yosemite at Lost Arrow Spire. This is Jack Whitaker saying goodbye for George Willig, John Long, and Bob Beatty. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. recognized around the world as a leader in sports television.